I could be wrong, but it smells kind of like Volvo gravy. What's up guys, it's Drifts and Lifts here. All right, so today's video, I figured it's been a little while since we did a how-to video on the channel. So um, today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to install a hydro e-brake with a dual caliper setup on your Volvo 740 940. So in the garage right now, guys, I have my, uh, my good friend and roommate Oliver's 940. So this has been a pretty good car for Oliver. Um, he's taken it to a lot of drift events now. It's a 940 turbo with a manual transmission. It's got some modified knuckles. Honestly, a pretty good all around drift car. Uh, but the last thing that he needs done is a proper e-brake. So he can be, um, you know, doing e-brake entries and it's just a good thing that every drift car should have. So I'm gonna start with uh, showing you guys all the parts that you need. Um, so we got a big pile of parts here. Uh, and then we're gonna go into a step-by-step -step how to install it in one of these cars. So let's get started here. So today's video is sponsored by Fish Racing Tech. So uh, Fish Racing Tech is actually a local company to me. Um, they make some really cool parts. So I'm actually running their Hydro E-Brake in my blue wagon build, which by the way, I'm gonna be showing you guys really soon. We actually just got her on the dyno. But yeah, Fish Racing Tech, they make a uh, really sick Hydro E-Brake. They also do bell housing adapters for a CDO9 transmission to a bunch of different engines. Um, they have a couple more really cool parts that they make. So obviously the link to their website is gonna be in the description of this video. Um, but yeah, they make this really sick hydro e-brake setup. So uh, Oliver picked one up from Fish. One of the things I love about this hydro e-brake is that uh, compared to a lot of ones, it's really nice and tight. It's really lightweight and uh, it doesn't have any play in the, in the handle and that kind of thing. So it's got this really sweet carbon fiber handle. The whole setup comes in at two and a half pounds, I think, with the uh, Willwood master cylinder on it. Um, so you can get it in a couple different colors. We got like, Oliver got the red one. I'm rocking the gunmetal one. So these accents here will change color. Um, carbon fiber handle. I don't think there's any other hydro e-brakes on the market that have a carbon handle. Really, really sick. And also the really dope thing about this is uh, you can install it in four different orientations. So you take a look here. Um, you can do all these different ways. And uh, if you want to do a pull e-brake, you want it in the up, you know, the upright position just like that you want a pole style or you can do it in the down position like uh, old school Chelsea Denofa style this is actually the position that I like to run my e-brakes in I've been yanking e-brakes in the pull up position for a long long time um, so just kind of how I prefer it. It's a little bit easier to set up too. You don't have to build an aftermarket bracket. Fish Racing Tech has actually given me a discount code to get 10% off one of these Hydro e-brake setups. So the link to uh, this e-brake is in the description of this video, obviously. And you can use code Drifts and Lifts for 10% off. But yeah, anyways, guys. So uh, obviously the first thing you're gonna have to pick up is a Hydro e-brake. So get yours from Fish because they're super sick. And uh, yeah. So we got some other parts here that we're gonna have to grab. Um, this is gonna be a braided line that is gonna run from our hydro e-brake to this T-fitting. And actually this T-fitting is gonna go right after the factory e-brake hole, uh, right around the rear seat area. So uh, we're gonna be running this braided line. This is a 24 inch uh, dash three to dash three. So you can get these kind of wherever. This is a Russell, Russell brand. Uh, so also we're gonna need two of these flare fittings right here. So it's a uh, number, th or number three, three eighths times 24 inverted flare male. So uh, you need two of these because one is gonna thread into the e-brake here and uh, another one is gonna thread into here. Um, and obviously it's gonna thread up to your uh, braided line here. So from this T, because we're running a dual caliper setup, this is a completely separate braking system and lines from our normal braking system, we're gonna get ourselves some hard lines. So this is just basic uh, hard line, brake line that you can get at any you know auto parts store. We got this at Lordco in Canada here. Uh, so this is 316 fittings and it's a 60 inch length. So this will roughly be enough um, you could probably get away with 55, but I wouldn't really recommend it. So you're gonna need two of these because uh, you're gonna be running those from the T to your calipers. So if we go down here, guys, we got some more parts. So uh, we've got two brand new rear Volvo calipers. So uh, you can get those off any auto parts store. Um, you know, I got these off Rock Auto for a pretty sweet deal. I think 60 bucks a pop around there. You're also gonna wanna pick up 
two factory brake lines. So I got those. This is just literally a Volvo 740 factory rear brake line. Nothing to it. Um, then obviously we're gonna need to get our hands on a set of dual caliper brackets. I don't have them on the Drifts and Lift store yet, um, but we are planning on getting some uh, parts on the Drifts and Lift store that you guys will be able to buy. Parts that I actually use in my cars and you know, that actually help me drift Volvos. Pick yourself up a set of dual caliper brackets. You can also get them I think on like TXR site. There's probably a couple Swedish sites that probably sell these, um, but yeah. Just a basic dual caliper bracket, nothing to it. Um, fairly simple design, honestly, just made out of steel. So then you're obviously gonna wanna get some new brake pads. So we got new brake pads there. Now for bolts, these are actually the factory bolts and I've already removed these and taken off the calipers. So I'm a little bit ahead of you guys, but really easy step, you should be able to figure that out. So what we're gonna wanna do is, we're gonna need double the amount of bolts as before. And because we have to go through extra material. So it's actually gonna go, you know, this through those two, and then it still has to go through this brake right here. Um, we're actually gonna wanna go a little bit longer than we normally do. So we're gonna want to pick up some bolts uh, about this much longer than your factory bolts are. So I found some in my bolt bin here. Um, I got four right here. So you're gonna want the same thread as your factory bolts at least for the ones that are going into the stock calipers. Now on the other side, with our extra set of calipers, so on the other side, we're gonna be able to run kind of whatever bolt uh, because we are gonna be running a nut on it. I'm not too sure what size these are. They actually aren't the same size as uh, the factory bolts here. I kind of just got some from uh, the auto parts store, but these will work. You're gonna want something very similar to this. Um, but preferably, honestly, you're gonna get the same size as factory right here. But these are gonna work because we're not actually threading into the axle um, like before. We are putting a nut on the back and we're gonna secure it that way. So get yourself a bunch of bolts. So as far as parts go guys, that's everything you need. So the first step of this guys is going to be getting rid of our factory e-brake setup. So we're gonna wanna remove our factory um, shoes and all the springs and uh, this clip here. Um, and actually we're gonna wanna take off this uh, dust cover as well because your dual caliper brackets aren't gonna fit. You can see there's a recessed little spot in here and that's not on the other side. So we're gonna have to take this dust cover off. Not too bad of a process, but I'll show you guys how to do it here. So first you're gonna wanna get some pliers and pop these springs off. <laughs> and uh, once you get those off, it is kind of a pain in the ass. I don't really know the best way to do it. You kinda just grab in there and wiggle around until you pop them out. <laughs> All right, so I got the springs off of the shoes. They kind of just hook in like around there. Uh, so what you're gonna wanna do now is this clip, uh, this is like the e-brake, I don't know how I'd, how I'd say it, but if you see right there, there's like a, a dowel pin. So you're gonna wanna pop that out and then this thing's just gonna come right out. But if you want to also, another way to do it is uh, you can just cut your e-brake cable, which you're gonna probably have to do anyways and then she'll just pull out off of that side. All right, so I just popped the e-brake shoes and our little uh, actuator off of this side. Um, looking at Oliver's axle on this side, it uh, looks like it's leaking pretty bad. So what we're gonna do is we have to pull these axle shafts out anyways. I think I have a spare in the garage for them with a better seal. We're gonna toss that in while we do that. But uh, the next step, guys, is going to be Firstly, removing the two bolts on the back of this little uh, bracket thing here. On the back side, we got one and two. We're gonna pull that bolt out and that's gonna remove this. And then once we're done that, we are actually going to remove all four of the axle bolts that hold the axle into the housing. So we got one right there, one up top here, um, and then two on the bottom. So we're gonna pull those out right now and yank these axle shafts out. All right guys, so once we've removed our six 14 millimeter bolts, um, two for the e-brake thing and then four holding the axle in. Um, so there's just basically a plate here that clamps and holds the axle into the housing. Um, so what we're gonna wanna do is pull the axle shaft out because this goes completely around it. So we're gonna wanna take that out. So let's just yank this out. Uh, there may be some oil popping out so you might wanna put like a tray down there. This one doesn't seem too bad probably cause like half of his oil leaked out this seal. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we're gonna wanna take those, uh, those dust shields off. And then once we're done that, we're just gonna reinstall our axle uh, just how it was before. But the only difference is you don't need <clears throat> these clips anymore. 
So these were to hold the factory e-brake shoes in. We're, we're deleting everything to do with the factory e-brake system, so uh, those can go. All right guys, so I got the back uh, dust shields off and I reinstalled my axles um, with, this, uh, with this little plate here. So it's just a four bolts. Make sure they're nice and tight. Uh, so we're gonna wanna keep removing our factory e-brake system. So we're gonna have to head to the interior now. Um, and we're gonna actually take out the whole factory e-brake box. So if we take a look here, guys, we're actually gonna be removing this whole piece here because uh, we're not gonna be wanting to run any of this factory stuff. So removing this is gonna make way for us to install and mount our uh, Fish Racing Tech Hydro Handbrake. So this thing's welded to the body in a couple spots. Um, so last time I honestly just took an angle grinder, kind of worked my way around it. All right guys, so now that we have a nice open space and uh, no more factory e-brake stuff on the car, what I'm gonna do right now is just quickly show you guys how these dual caliper brackets mount up. So how it goes is uh, you can actually run it either or. You can put it from this side or from this side. So if you look here, that's how it's gonna sit. And uh, your factory brake is gonna go in between this bracket and uh, your axle here. So and then on this side, one thing I want to mention guys is uh, oftentimes when I've installed these, I've only installed two of them, but both times I've installed these on other people's cars and the blue wagon of mine, I actually had to put washers right here in between this bracket and our, uh, our caliper that's going to be sitting there. So um, just because this, although it's flush up against that, uh, that lip on the axle there, there is going to be a little bit of grime and uh, you know dirt and rust and stuff so that's going to cause this edge to sit a little bit farther that way than we want but that's not a big deal because uh, you can literally just take washers and space your new caliper this way a little bit um, if it's not perfect just take it off add another washer um, you can kind of look how much space you need when you have it on and uh, yeah it's pretty straightforward nothing to it honestly guys um, so what we're going to do now is install our, uh, our brake rotors back on um, and then we're going to install our factory caliper. We're going to thread the bolts in a little bit but we're not going to thread them all the way in because we do want a nice amount of play. We want to be able to kind of wiggle this around and uh, to get bolts in and stuff. Um, there isn't a lot of space in between this, uh, this axle shell clamp and uh, this so we kind of have to jimmy it up and down so we can get that bolt in there um, really not too difficult but it uh, just takes a little bit of finesse so I got my rotor on as well as my factory caliper now I'm using my extra long extended bolts um, just so we can get through this as well as into this because we got some extra space we got to make up with these uh, dual caliper brackets so these are gonna be pretty good now uh, what we can do is install our new caliper on the other side. Um, now, you'll notice that I left this kind of loose and you're gonna wanna do that so you can kind of jimmy this around and you know get another bolt in there and that kind of thing. Um, once you have it all in, then you're gonna wanna tighten it all together. So we got calip or, uh, dual caliper brackets and then I did two little washers in between the bracket and our caliper. A nice bolt through the middle and uh, then we have a nut securing it on the other side. So it's the exact same up on the top there. I haven't tightened anything down yet, but what I'm gonna do is uh, we're gonna tighten these bolts first. And then once these are nice and solid up against here, uh, then we're gonna see if our caliper clearance on the rotor is where we want it to be. So basically looking around here, um, there's only so much that you can do. Like it, it really has to be perfect because if it's out, this rotor is gonna grind on here or on the other side, same kind of thing. So um, this should be good, um, but we may just have to mess with it a little bit uh, once we get this nice and solid, so. All right guys, so here's the finished product. Um, so I had to use three washers in between there because uh, as you can see, this 
these two plates are not quite flush up against there perfectly. So if you don't have them like butted right up against there, no grime in there. Honestly, you pretty much have to like sandblast your, your axle housing if you want that to be flush, but just bolt it up and uh, you'll be able to see how much space you need. Basically, you want a little bit of space in between there and a little bit of space on the other side. You should be able to rotate the axle without any like uh, resistance. It shouldn't be biting on metal to metal at all. So this one's good to go. Um, I just did the other side as well. The other side actually took four washers because I really couldn't get it up against this nicely. Like there's just a lot of grime. You can see all this like this grime and stuff, right? It's just not really gonna allow it to sit flush up against there, but that's the gist of it. So uh, now we're gonna go into the interior and install our hydro handle. All right guys, so unfortunately I didn't really film the process of this because it was kind of difficult, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but this is kind of what we got here. So we got bolts going through the trans tunnel down in there and we're actually running washers on the bottom just to give the trans tunnel a little bit more like, you know, strength. Um, you can't run b that big of a washer because these are quite close to one another. So you're gonna get not much of a washer on there, but it's pretty solid. It's not moving at all and uh, it's right in the right spot. So we got this running right next to the shifter as well as the seat. Um, so you'll be able to grab kind of up here and that should work pretty good. So if you guys are doing this, you might want to do something a little different. I kind of have a feeling over time, um, we may actually start to flex the trans tunnel because uh, it's not the strongest metal. Um, it's tough to say. I haven't actually ran these e-brakes for like, you know, a couple years or multiple seasons. So we'll kind of find out when we get there, but um, I'm sure this will be good for now. Uh, if I were to spend a little bit more time on it, I would maybe weld a reinforcement plate in here and then drill through that. Um, all we did was I got Dan, my friend uh, is, is hanging out with me right now. Um, basically, I just got him to position the e-brake exactly where we wanted it. And then I got him to hold it there. And I took a Sharpie and just like, um, you know, did a little black mark through the hole on the fish uh, bracket here. And that showed me where to drill. I didn't really get it perfect. So I kind of had to like ovalize the holes a little bit to uh, make sure all the bolts went in nicely. Um, but it's pretty solid. I'm pretty happy with it. And uh, it looks really dope in there. So next step, guys, we got the dual caliper bracket set up with our uh, dual calipers. So the next step is going to be running our brake lines. All right, so first we're gonna take our factory rubber line and we're gonna thread it into our new calipers. So you're just gonna go on the, on the top here, somewhere around here. We're just gonna thread that in and we're gonna kind of run this line. Uh, we, can, we can bend it and like loop it back uh, because our hard line is gonna come up right around here. And so we're just gonna make this connect to that. Um, and then I'll show you guys how we're gonna route the lines under the car here. So if we crawl under, what I did last time is I kind of fished the line right down the side of the trailing arm here. And you actually want the hard line to more or less run the exact same path that the factory brake line is running. The only difference is that once you get under the car past the gas tank, I'll show you guys real quick here. So if we take a look here, here's our factory brake line running alongside the trailing arm here, comes down here right around here, and here's the factory T. So that's where you got that, but we're gonna run the line a little bit farther past here. And then just right above here is where our factory e-brake hole is. So we're gonna come kind of along there and up into there. Um, the other side is the exact same thing. Mind you, it's slightly different in length, so you might just have to, you know, you might have to bend the line a little bit more, however you wanna do it. Um, but these brake lines that you buy from the store are pretty good. You can bend them quite a bit and they will not like, you know, kink on you and that kind of thing. Um, actually, another way I should mention guys is if you have a 740 parts car, another easy way to do this is literally take all your factory brake lines and brakes off of a, of a parts car. And uh, then it actually supplies you with a T, so you don't have to get one from the auto parts store. And uh, the lines are already the perfect size, basically. And they're already bent kind of in the right um, route that you want to take. So that works, but um, not everybody has a 740 parts car. And sometimes it's nice to have like new stuff on your car, you know, brand new parts. So um, yeah, 
I'm gonna route these lines, guys, and uh, I'll show you kind of what I get up to. All right, guys, so I'm just continuing this video here in the morning. Um, we were in here till like 2 a.m. last night. So I got these lines routed. Um, they're not perfect, but I'll, it's kind of a general, I'll show you guys what I got here. All right, guys, so hopefully you can see this. Um, so you can see I zap strapped it to the factory line, kind of routed it around here. And because I had so much extra length, I had to go up and around the drive shaft that way. Probably not your best bet. If you can, I would maybe put it all on that side, but to get it into the T nicely, I had to go around the drive shaft. Um, and then as you can see, I got this line. So that runs down there just by the gas tank and then up by the trailing arm. Same thing on the other side, literally the same thing as this side. Um, so yeah, there's really nothing to it. I'm probably going to put a couple more zap straps just to make sure everything's secure. Uh, especially in this area because I don't want it to like, you know, get in contact with the drive shaft. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, we're looking pretty good. So uh, I just tightened all the fittings. So I got my T fitting there and I just snugged everything down. So we are actually ready to bleed now. So uh, as far as bleeding one of these goes, guys, it's literally just like a brake system. You, uh, you pump the pedal, in this case the handbrake, and uh, you crack the bleeder, you pump it, you close the bleeder, you let go, you crack the bleeder, you pump it, you close it, you let go. So uh, it's basically that process. Um, sometimes they will like trap air in the system and then you just gotta pump it a bunch, get some fluid down into there, and uh, that'll work. So, um, but yeah, I'm excited for this, guys. I'm gonna cut these zap straps so they're not like hanging down. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much good to go here. So this is what it looks like up top here. Um, so one thing you could do guys, I forgot to mention, you could get like a, uh, a 90 degree fitting and run it down here. So it's not kind of up in the open like this, but um, not a huge deal. This is like Oliver's drift car. So it's not really like a daily driver. Well, I guess he does daily drive it to work sometimes, but uh, yeah, that should be fine. Like there, um, he doesn't really ever take passengers in the back of this car. So uh, yeah, that's pretty sweet. So you guys will notice I actually ran like a nut underneath here to raise the front of the e-brake up until I realized that you can actually just adjust the e-brake right there. So uh, if you want the handle to sit higher, you can just adjust that. Um, so that was kind of a derp moment, but um, it is nice and solid. It's not going anywhere. And uh, yeah, so you literally just fill your fluid up right in here because it's an internal uh, reservoir, internal mixed in with the uh, Willwood Master there. So pour your fluid in there. Make sure you keep her topped up as you bleed it. And uh, yeah, pretty much good to go. So it just so happens that today is actually a drift event and uh, me and Oliver are both signed up, ready to go. So it's like 8 a.m. in the morning right now, just getting ready, finishing off this e-brake. Uh, so we're gonna go test this e-brake on the track. I'm gonna do some runs in Oliver's car, show you guys how well it works. And uh, yeah, that'll pretty much be the video for you. All right, so we just got to the drift event. So it's actually a competition being held today. Um, we're just going to be doing an open drift on the back track, but they're also running the main track and they are doing uh, round two of the BCDA, British Columbia Drifting Association Grassroots Competition Series. So um, yeah, we're probably going to go watch a little bit of that. But uh, first, we're going to hop in Oliver's car and I'm going to test out this e-brake. So uh, shout out to Fish Racing Tech because they're actually sponsoring this event. So. Um, you know, I always love supporting companies that support the drift community locally here. They're helping keep drifting alive and well in British Columbia, Canada. So um, we're just checking under the hood of Oliver's car. We taped off the battery terminals. Um, yeah, I'm pretty stoked to try out this e-brake. So the only thing I got to say is uh, the stock M46 shifter, the shifter's pretty big on the top of it. So when you're in second gear, it might be a little bit in the way of the of the uh, e-brake. Um, but I think it's going to be all right. So uh, we're going to head to the back track and do a couple of test laps. A quick shout out to uh, Drift Bricker on Instagram. Um, he, we uh, got one of his don't fucking crash stickers because Oliver has crashed a couple of Volvos. So it's always a good reminder. Just put it right on the uh, on the instrument cluster there. Yeah, it's only like three Volvos too late, but that's OK. <laughs> yeah, Drift Bricker, you should have uh, hooked Oliver up a long time ago, man. <laughs> Yeah, so every time you hit full boost, it just boom, Yeah. It just sucks shut. All right, guys, so Oliver just got back from his parents' house. Um, he had to grab this intake pipe because his factory one was actually sucking shut under boost. So we're not gonna have that stall issue anymore. It should be good. So we're gonna take it for a couple laps and uh, test out this e-brake. 
All right, guys. So we got the car good to go now. Let's do a proper run here with this uh, with this e brake. So that is pretty much a wrap up of today's video. So I hope you liked it. Um, that should give you kind of an idea how to install a hydro e-brake in one of these cars. Um, there's a couple things you can do a little differently. Like I said, you can make like a reinforcement plate for the trans tunnel. Um, you can route the lines a little bit differently, maybe a little safer, um, but that's kind of the, the basics of it. So um, the e-brake works pretty good. We do have to bleed it a little more. The reason I know that is because sometimes when you pull up on it, it would lock a little bit lower and then sometimes you'd have to pull it up a little more. So um, that just means we got to bleed it. I was really rushed this morning. I was working on that thing until like 2 a.m. in the morning last night. Woke up at around like 6.30 and, uh, you know, installed the installed the lines and then uh, and bled the thing. So. We were in a rush because we were trying to get to this drift event, but um, yeah, so shout out to Fish Racing Tech guys. Uh, go hit up their website and cop one of their e-brakes, one of the best e-brakes on the market. Um, really stoked to be running them and basically all of our cars now. Oliver's got one, my girlfriend's gonna be getting one. Um, I still have a stock e-brake in this car, but what I'm noticing is the stock e-brake cable is slowly stretching and I'm losing kind of the, uh, the ability to yank on it and really lock it up nicely. So I'm gonna be installing one in this car as well. Honestly, at this point, I think that every single Volvo 740, 940, 240 should have a fish racing e-brake in it. Um, it's just kind of like a thing you should have when you're trying to drift these cars, so. So one more thing, guys, if you wanna support the channel, we got merchandise on the Drifts and Lift store now. So uh, head over to the Drifts and Lift store. The link to the store is in the description of this video. So we got our Volvo Drift Pilsner and Volvo Drift Pale Ale shirts revamped with some ITBs and a bunch of cool stuff. So head over to the store, check them out. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a great way to support the channel so we can keep these Volvo projects and uh, stuff like that rolling. So little shout out to uh, British Columbia Drifting Association. Um, these guys put on events for us and we're so lucky to have, you know, we're really lucky to have Justin Jordan and the guys putting on events for us because uh, this track is really sweet and it takes like a lot of work to make these happen. Um, so shout out to those guys. Shout out to Fish again for sponsoring this event. Um, big help to the drift community in, uh, in British Columbia, Canada here. So yeah, I'm gonna go peel a couple laps in the gold car on the back track. And uh, yeah, it's only got another about hour left of this event.
Like and subscribe for Volvo butt cheeks. Peace out.